Hi, I'm Ted from EverythingAttachments.com, and we're here to show you how a model 1912 lineback plow uh, works and what you're going to do to adjust everything to get it right for you. This is a 32 horsepower Kubota. This is really a full size tractor, just barely. What you're looking for on any tractor smaller than this, you're looking so when you're down in the ground that your lift arms are not running uphill, that they're level or slightly downhill. Now this arm is adjusted right here on your side link. Quite a bit further down this pin is lower and what you're after is to get this plow shear pretty level and then when you're above ground you're going to be pitched down because that's what's going to bring it down into the ground and that's going to be adjusted here on the top link to change the angle of what you're doing of how, how much it's going to want to dig. You don't want it constantly pitched down too far because if it's pitched down too far it's going to continually want to pull down and you're going to end up working your lift lever up and down at, and then you're going to end up with dipping. So you want to end up with it running in the ground about this deep and turning the ground over but without and once the once the plow is down under the ground then your, your mow board and your cutting uh, pile shear should be running level. So you're going to end up lowering your right side link to get your plow level to start with. If you had this size tractor or a larger one, you would want the Model 81 plow. It is a full size plow. Still uses the same size plow bottom though. Okay, so he's starting the plow. This is the first time that this has been in the ground, so we're probably going to have to make some more adjustments. It looks like it's not running quite as deep as I would want it to, so we'll probably pitch the front of it down just a little bit more to get it to go just a little bit deeper. And that's why it's called a turning plow. It is actually turning the ground over, so now all you see is dirt instead of grass on top, and that's what you want. This is good, good North Carolina hard clay. This is about as hard as you're going to get. It's got a combination of wiregrass and fescue on it. This ground has never been plowed and has been packed a lot. So he's going to end up with his tires back in the first furrow that he's already cut. Okay, let me pitch this down just a little bit. All right. So now that he has his tires in the furrow, when he goes forward, he's going to recover up the first hole that he's already made. All right, now we've already made two passes, and what we're really doing is we're not going quite deep enough. The lift is going all the way down on the tractor, but we've still got a few adjustments left here. We have several pinhole adjustments in the side links. They're all the way in the top, and we're going to go all the way to the bottom, and that's going to give us about six or seven more inches of total depth that it can fall. We won't be using all of that, but that's where we're going to start. All right, shut her off, peanut. All right, raise your lift up. Okay, you got it. I'm going to go to the bottom hole. So now we've readjusted our links where they're going to go lower, should make the plow go deeper. Yeah, that's taking about 10 inches there. We were only taking about six before, and that's about what we want to take is about ten. So he's going to stay in the furrow there, and he's going real slow on this pass just so you can see how the ground is getting turned over. I 
I'm going to adjust the uh, top link just a little bit, Peanut. It's pitched down just a little bit. I'm going to adjust the top link up just to make it just a little bit longer. All right, let's try that. Remember, this is only a 12-inch plow meant for a subcompact tractor. Any tractor, even a 12 or 14 horsepower tractor that has a standard three-point hitch can pull this plow. If you'll notice, the ground is, the dirt is hitting the top of the beam at the top of the plow, and that's because it's a low beam plow meant for a compact tractor. Uh, with a bigger tractor like this, you could use the Model 81. It would be even better, but this is what we're using this for tractor now. tractor here, we have two sets of tires. These are the agriculture tires that are on it now. They're narrow, they're very aggressive, they pull the best in the dirt. Uh, we also have a set of R4 tires, which are what a lot of the compact tractors now are coming with. They don't wear near as bad with the R4 tire if you're working on asphalt and so forth. But when you're actually plowing, it, it's really a help to have the more narrow tires, which are a tractor tread for doing this. So after we make this pass here, we're going to give it a whirl with the two bottom plow which is the Model 81, which is meant for a tractor that has a little more height to it like this Kubota does. I'm Ted from EverythingAttachments.com and this is the start of our gardening series. We started here with a plow. We're going to use a lot of other implements. Uh, <clears throat> my family's been in the, in the farming industry, mainly started pulling plows, I guess, in the mid-1800s with mules. My great-grandfather was a mule trader. Uh, my grandfather was a mule trader. Then my father, when he was a teenager, when a customer came through with a trailer and had an old Alice Chalmers tractor on it. I guess it was new then. He said he thought he liked those pretty good because he was the one that had to clean out the stalls for the mules. Grandfather said if he wanted a couple of them he could get a few tractors to try and uh, I think it was a competition for the next few years of what was better, the mule or the tractor. But uh, it looks like the tractors won the war on that one. So we've been in the, in the plowing business for 150 years. This is all about gardening right now, uh, with the price of vegetables and everything going up at the grocery goes store. along with the thought of, where is your food coming from? Well, back in the old days, I know where it came from. It came from a big rack on the side of the wall full of cans that I wished would go away before winter. And now I just wish I could have them all back because we can't get the good vegetables like we used to. Not to mention the pesticides and the different things that they're using and all the bacteria that we're getting out of the other countries. Half of it's grown in Mexico, half of it's grown in China. Uh, they don't have the same restrictions as we do on the chemicals that we use. So uh, I know if it's homegrown, well, I know where it came from. I know what's been put on it. And I know it's going to be good. Uh, the prices of the grocery store continue to go up. And so in my opinion, the, the hobby farmer is definitely going to come back.